What's up guys? Welcome to iRace's Garage. Today we have another multi-guitar review. This time we're looking at the Firefly FFMN Music Man style, specifically the Eddie Van Halen version. So let's go. <laughs> Welcome back guys. If this is your first time here at the channel, I hope you enjoy it. We have a focus on budget-based guitar playing because you don't have to spend a ton of money to have a great guitar. And this is one of those perfect examples. The Firefly guitars have become very popular because they offer a lot of bang for the buck. But that doesn't necessarily mean that when you buy a guitar, you should expect it to be perfect, especially in this price range. So by going over two of these, I think it's going to give us a pretty good idea of what you could expect if you're going to buy one yourself. Now I'm going to go through some specific categories with these guitars. We're going to look at the cosmetics. Typically I would look at the quality of the nut, but with these being the Floyd Rose style nut, there's not really a whole lot to go over there. We're also going to look at the quality of the fretwork, the fretboard. We're going to look at the overall construction quality. And we're going to take a look at the electronics and the overall wiring quality to see how those look. And most importantly, to see how the two compare. If we see some differences here and there, that might be a sign that maybe there's not the best quality control. But if you see some consistency in certain areas, it gives you a little bit more assurance that if you buy one, you'll probably get more of the same. So let's start with the cosmetics. To me, these are an extremely bold design and it's really hard to miss exactly what these are about and overall looking at these I don't see the type of blemishes and overall cosmetic uh, problems that I saw on those IYV guitars in one of my prior videos overall the paintwork looks really solid I don't see the sanding scratches and the buffing marks and, and the, the, uh, the flaws in the paint and that sort of a thing what I do see which I actually think is really cool is that these are clearly hand stenciled and hand masked designs. It's not like they're using a vinyl mask or a stencil where every single one would be exactly the same. If you look at these, you can definitely see some differences. And to just point some of these out, if you look at this little triangle, this red triangle here behind the black bar, that one's really tiny. This one is pretty large. And you can see those different types of things all over the place. We've got this little mini triangle right here. You can see it's just a little bit different. They're overall the same design, but there are definitely some unique differences. And honestly, I think that's great. It really gives it that handmade touch, and it's almost like a fingerprint. Each one is different. So I don't really want to knock something off for consistency there. I think that's the nature of the beast with a handmade design. Uh, that said, if you do get in close and look, you can see some areas where... It, some of the masking is not perfect. You know, you can see where the black doesn't fully come up to the white, or in some of these you can see there's a little bit of a white band underneath where the black was. So it's not absolutely perfect, but again, how perfect should it be? It's actually modeled after a guitar that was completely painted by hand and was, up for all intents and purposes, a beater guitar. But overall, the finish quality on this, the, the clear coat looks good, it's nice and smooth, it's well polished. And, and I feel like they're consistent aside from the obvious differences that you get from a, a hand masked design. So now we're going to move on to the fretwork and the fretboard. And it's hard not to notice these flamed maple necks. And I'm really impressed with how these necks look. It really is a very nice flame, both front and back. It is a separate piece of wood for the fretboard. It's not a one piece. Otherwise, you would see the skunk stripe in the back. But the pieces are nicely flamed and they look nice and consistent. Now, in terms of the frets, these are stainless steel frets. And like Firefly is starting to get a reputation for, it has the nicely rounded ball-ended frets. These are rounded prior to installation. And because they're done prior to installation, if you look really close, you can see that some of these are closer to the edge of the fretboard than others. Most of them are just ever so slightly recessed. So when you run your hand up and down the fretboard, you don't even really feel the frets. But if you do run into a fret, it's very nicely finished. Now these are stainless frets, which is great. 
the only real complaint I have about these frets is that even though the ends are very nicely rounded, the frets are not polished and they have a very gritty feeling. And I'm sure you're going to be able to hear this. Now that would come off on its own with a little bit of play in, but to really get the most out of this, I feel like these frets need to be polished. The overall consistency in terms of fret height seems pretty good. Uh, the action was set up pretty low out of the box and there wasn't a whole lot of buzz, but I think overall the real issue with these is just that they need a polish. So overall I'm happy with the fret work. I am really looking forward to polishing these because I've never played a guitar with stainless frets before. Can't wait to get these polished and see how they feel. So now I want to move on to the overall construction quality. Now I had already mentioned that the cosmetic parts of the body look pretty good, but from a construction standpoint, I have no complaints either. We've got a nice tight neck joint all around. The body feels like it's well finished. In terms of the material, other than knowing it's wood, I don't know much about it because it's got the paint over it. But what I do know is that both guitars are pretty consistent in weight. Uh, they both weigh right in at about 7.6 pounds. And with some inexpensive guitars, you can get a lot of variability from one to the next. Now, in terms of the neck, the overall build quality on the neck feels excellent. Uh, the wood, I think, looks great. It's got a, a nice uh, satin finish, so it feels great. And the only real complaint I have here is that the edge of the fretboard's not rolled, so it doesn't have that nice played-in feel like one that would be nicely rolled. But overall, in terms of build quality, I've got no complaints at all. Uh, the routing for the, uh, for the nut seems like it's really nice. Overall, fit and finish is just really good. So no complaints there. The routing for the pickups and for the Floyd looks good. It, I don't see any sort of chip out or, or anything that indicates that the bit was dull. You can see that they're painted black inside. Just overall nice work. So now we get to the quality of the wiring. And unfortunately, this is really where these guitars fell short. Both of them came with some issues. The first one I looked at actually had no output whatsoever. So I had to take it apart and try to figure out why. What I discovered was that it appears that the ground side of the tone capacitor was actually up against the signal connection on that potentiometer, which was causing a dead short and I had no output. That in its own right was a pretty simple fix, but unfortunately it should have never left the factory that way. It was completely non-functional. And it's clear to me that once this guitar was finished and put together, it was not function checked at the end. There might have been some sort of a function check along the way, but not once things were done. This is not something that would have happened from shipping. Uh, the capacitor is not heavy enough to actually move under its own weight during shipping. So that said, I had to dig into this to try to troubleshoot. And overall, I had to look around and I felt like the quality of the wire itself was pretty good. They use a lot of coaxial wire for some of the longer runs. It does have full size volume pot and it has a push pull tone pot so that you can split the coils. And because of that, there's, there's quite a bit of wiring going around. The wiring up by the switch is pretty crammed in there. And overall, the soldering connections don't look the best to me. Uh, you can tell that there was a lot of solder put on and it doesn't look like it flowed as hot as it should in most places. I don't know if that's really going to give you any short-term problems, but it could definitely have some long-term implications. Now, another thing I noticed on the guitar I had apart is that this switch here is very, very low quality. Now, it is a Switchcraft style switch and not a box style switch, but where the switch is put together, you can actually wiggle it and everything moves around it doesn't feel like it's going to hold up. So I'm not real impressed with that. Now we come to the other guitar. Now everything worked on this guitar, but the one thing I ran into on this guitar is that the volume pot is like an on off switch right at about two on the volume control is where the guitar just will come on and almost be full volume. By the time you get to two and a half, you're at full volume. Now, both of these guitars have, linear volume pots and personally i prefer a linear volume pot and 
that's exactly how one of these works. It's got a nice smooth taper and it's consistent with the other guitars that I have with linear volumes. However, this one here is very much an on-off switch and it's just so bad that it's completely unusable. So we're going to have to swap out the volume pot on this guy here just so that we can use it. So overall, I feel like the electronics on these leave a little bit to be desired. Now, the one last thing I wanted to go over is pickup quality and hardware quality. Uh, the pickups, they measured very consistent. Uh, both of the bridge pickups measured right at 14.1K, and they measure at about 5.5 Henry's. Uh, both of the neck pickups measure right at about 8.1 to 8.3K, and they measure in at about 3.5 Henry's. So based on those inductance values compared to the resistance values, it's pretty clear to me that these are a little bit overwound, but they use a ceramic magnet. Of course, ceramic magnets are cheaper, but they also give you the benefit of having less inductance. So if you have an overwound pickup, it, it retains some of its brightness, and it provides a lot more output, so it makes it quite a bit hotter. What I'm expecting out of the bridge pickup, being that it's wound to about 14K, I'm expecting this to be like a little bit hotter version of a DiMarzio Super Distortion. That's a, that's a pickup that I really like the sound of. It's bright and it's balanced. It doesn't have the kind of honk that you get from a JB. This one I'm hoping is pretty similar other than being a little bit hotter. Now the neck pickup coming in at a little over 8K, that's a little on the hot side for a neck PAF, but again, because of the ceramic magnet, the inductance is quite a bit lower than a normal PAF. So this is gonna be a pretty bright pickup. Now, one more thing I wanted to go over is the overall setup quality. When I got these right out of the box, they were detuned quite a bit. And as a result, the floating trim was leaning back quite a bit. Once I tuned to E standard, I'm happy to say that both of these trims are floating perfectly and they're perfectly level with the body. One area in terms of uh, the component quality I ran into here is the fitment of this trim bar with regard to the high E saddle. On one of these, it goes right on and there's just an ever so slight gap so that it'll screw on nice and easy. On the other one, there's a little bit of an interference fit and it makes it a little bit tougher to install this and it may end up marking up the chrome on that saddle eventually. I've seen some reports of other guys online that ran into the same problem, so I don't think that this is unique to mine. At some point, I may take the trim apart and see how much, how much adjustability there is in this mount. Worst case scenario is we might have to slot that, uh, that mount hole a little bit just to slide it a little bit further away from the saddle. The action is just a little under 4 64 but right now, neither of these necks have enough relief in them. They've only got a couple of thousandths of relief. And I think once we get the relief dialed in, it's going to bring the action up just a hair. And I think it's going to bring it right about to 4 64 which I think is a pretty good place. Now, if you want lower action, that's going to depend on the quality of your overall fretwork and how dialed in your setup is. On these, right where they are, which is below 4 64 I have some very minor fret buzz on just a couple of frets on one, and on the other one, no fret buzz anywhere. So I think once we get a little bit of relief into this neck, you would be able to run a pretty low action and still have great playability. So overall, I have a pretty positive impression of these. I love how they look, and I'm super, super, super impressed with the necks. Not only do they look great, they feel fantastic. I'm not a shredder neck kind of guy. I like a thicker neck. These necks definitely deliver. I measured the thickness of the neck and it comes in at right around 23 and a half millimeters at the 12th fret. That's pretty similar to like a Fender Modern C. In playing this, it feels like a thicker neck to me. I think these have a little bit more shoulder than the Fender Modern neck. The finish on the neck, to me, it looks like it's a satin finish and not just the bare roasted maple, but it feels fantastic. It's super smooth. I've just got absolutely no complaints with these necks whatsoever. I feel like the price of the guitar was worth it just for the neck. It's fantastic. Overall build quality, I'm happy. Um, definitely some areas to address. Definitely needs a setup. And if you're going to do anything other than sit in your living room and play it, if you're going to take it out and gig it, you need reliability. I feel like upgrading the wiring is a must. 
areas I would address is definitely electronics, pickups, that's totally subjective. I don't have any issues with these pickups, although I haven't heard them yet. Um, the quality of the Floyd overall, I feel like the material quality looks pretty good. I have noticed that when I use the bar, it doesn't really come back to pitch. It comes back a hair flat. You pull up on the bar and then, then it gets you back into the ballpark. That said, I'm still seeing about a 30 or 40 cent difference between if you leave it down versus leave it up. So overall, I think we're going to need to do a little bit of work to the Tremolo just to make it come back to pitch. Hopefully I can keep it floating and I don't have to block it to get that kind of tuning stability. I guess we'll have to see. All right, so now it's time for me to get these down on the bench, get them set up, take care of their issues, and start using them. I've already got my buddies down on the bench and I've gone through his. Now it's time to do this one. Once I go through both of these, I'm going to come back and let you know what it took for me to get the Floyd to stay in tune, to get the trim bar off of the high E, and what it took to get the wiring fixed. Those are the issues that I think need the most attention. I'm going to let you know exactly what it took. Then I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback about just maybe who these guitars might be for and who might want to avoid them. So stick around. All right, so now you can see I'm back and I only have one guitar. I went through and set both of these up, fixed all of their issues, and my buddy came and picked his up. He's been playing it for a couple of days now and really enjoys it. I've had a chance to play mine and I'm enjoying it too. So what I want to do now is give you all the information about what I did to these guitars specifically to get them into this great playing condition. Basically, I addressed all of the shortcomings and issues that I've already discussed, starting with the fretwork. I sanded and polished these frets in order to make them perfectly smooth. Now they're very quiet and super, super smooth when you do vibrato and bending. That made a huge difference. Now moving down to the trim, we had a few things to take care of. The first thing I did was make sure that this trim arm wasn't interfering with the high E saddle. That's extremely easy. This trim mount is just held in with a single screw that you can access from the bottom. And if you loosen that screw, there's enough wiggle room to be able to move this off of that saddle. In my case, I took that screw right out, made sure I put some Loctite on it, then reinstalled. If you don't do that, then you'll find that these screws can loosen up and this whole thing can come apart. Not a big deal, but it's easier to just put a little Loctite on it now and never have to worry. Now, in order to get the floating trim to stay in tune, what I had to do there was to clean up the knife edges. On both of these, the knife edges weren't in the best of shape. And I think the reason for that was that they had these tuned to pitch when they adjusted the action to bring the bridge up or down, whatever it needed. Well, when you're doing that, you end up putting a lot of pressure on that knife edge. And when you turn these screws, you're doing it right up against that knife edge and it can gall them and make them less precise. I took a small file and then some fine grit sandpaper, I cleaned up those knife edges, and then I added just a little bit of grease to it so that they won't wear anymore in the future. It is important if you're working on a Floyd, don't set your action under pitch or you're gonna have that problem too. Now this stays in tune pretty well. It's not 100% perfect, um, but it's pretty damn good. I think if you really want it to be perfect, one of your best bets might be to block it so that you can only dive and not bend it sharp. That's probably what I'll end up doing with this in the future just because I'm not really a trim user anyway. I would just rather have that rock solid tuning stability. Now the last area I addressed other than giving it the basic setup was the electronics. Now I had mentioned before that the volume pot on the other guitar was like an on off switch. What I had discovered is that the output wire that goes to the output jack was actually tied to the wrong lug of the pot. Once I discovered that, I was able to move that to the correct lug, and now the volume pot worked just like it should with a nice smooth taper. So that ended up being a pretty quick and easy fix, but it just again shows that the wiring that they're doing on these really, really is quite substandard. And it won't be a surprise to me at all if you get one that has wiring problems too. And that leads me to my next point. Who is this guitar for? Who should consider this guitar and who should maybe avoid it? Well, I think if you have realistic expectations and you're the type of person that's either willing to do this troubleshooting and do some of this repair work yourself or take it to a competent tech, then I think this is definitely a worthwhile guitar. I think 
even with those issues, it really is a great value. I think the neck alone is worth what I paid for the guitar, if I'm being honest. I love this neck. It looks amazing. It feels great. And even if I don't end up doing something with this guitar, you can bet this neck will end up somewhere. It's that good. I think this guitar also makes a great modding platform. If you're going to replace electronics, if you're going to upgrade the Floyd, replace the pickups, etc., then some of these wiring issues and maybe some of the quality issues with the Floyd aren't really a big concern to you. I have seen other folks out there with these guitars already who do make a lot of Floyd upgrades. And I feel like the guitar is a good enough guitar to warrant that. Like I said, I'm not really a big trem user, so for myself, I'm probably just going to block it and call it a day. But I think this guitar really is a great value if you're willing to put in a little bit of that elbow grease. If you're the type of person that's really looking for something that's plug and play, take it out of the box, tune it up, and take it to a gig, these are definitely not the guitars for you. These guitars inherently have quality control issues that the end user has to take care of. And once you do it, they're a great value and they're a great guitar, but I think a lot of the reputation that guitars get for being cheap junk is because some people have an expectation that it's going to be a great guitar right out of the box. If that's your expectation, then I think the reality is guitars like this aren't really a good fit for you and that you're going to need to find something maybe a little bit further up the scale in terms of quality and price. That said, guys, I hope this was helpful. I enjoyed doing this. I love having the opportunity to review multiple guitars like this, and hopefully it helps you guys out too. If this is something that you did enjoy or you felt like you learned from, please leave me a comment below, like the page, maybe consider subscribing so I can build up my subscriber count. If I can get this page to be a little bit bigger, I'm hoping that I can take some of these ideas of these multiple guitar reviews and really start moving it forward into something that can be really helpful for the guitar community. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. Hope this helped. Thanks a lot.